it's really the list or what I call it the laundry list of what to do what to plant what you're trimming what's slowing down and uh, we're gonna go through that and then at the end we're gonna answer any of your questions so hold your questions for last and then I'll answer them at the end um, I'm gonna give a little bit of a, a few plugs too we're doing the um, the, the uh, butterfly fly plant ex exchange. So if you have your tropical milkweeds, bring them in and we'll give you one of the natives like this, Lesbius um, fascularis. So we're doing that and we're doing donations too. So a lot, you'll see like the little butterflies that we are hanging on the trees right now that you fill out your wish and give a $5 do uh, dollar donation to the Xeresis Society. So that's a really good thing going on right now. And um, so, and then we have the, the hummingbird um, all the hummingbird stuff is coming out. So the hummingbird um, thing is, is going on right now. So I'll talk about that a little later when I get into the hummingbird plants. But okay, let's start. So um, we're still bouncing around in June gloom a little bit, you know, but we're finally in June. This month we'll, we'll, we'll have cool mornings and hotter afternoons. So I start watching my watering. We're switching to a lot of the heat lovers. So now in the nursery, it's great to see is all those warm season annuals and the hot season perennials and even like the different vegetables. So let me go through and I'm going to talk a little bit about the annuals. So now as we go into June, we're going to start getting in all the summer annuals. So the zinnias are, are one. Uh, there's a couple different varieties of zinnias. You have the larger grandiflora type, big flower. You have the little perfusion variety. I always find that the perfusion, even though they're a smaller flower, they're a little bit uh, powdery mildew resistant. So that's with those. So you got the the, um, the zinnias, uh, vinca's coming in. So we're starting to get all of our vinca. Uh, vinca, we treat it as an annual, but it can almost be like a short-lived perennial. So that, those are coming in. Um, we're still doing all of our cosmos. We're doing um, the ageratums are coming in for the summer. A uh, good little annual, likes a lot of heat. Cleome, uh, Cleome the spider plant's coming in. Uh, we're still doing dianthus. The little um, sweet williams or some of the dianthus are coming in. And uh, one of my favorites too, even though we don't have that many of them yet, I love gomfrinas. Now gomfrinas are interesting. There are some annuals and some perennials. So the shorter ones are usually annuals and the taller ones like these are perennials. But definitely a good summer plant. Look at that weed, gotta pull that weed out. It's like big old weed, just sort of toss it to the side. <laughs> and um, we're getting some of our trailing petunias. Now, one thing I love about the trailing petunias, this is called night sky. They can take a little bit more heat than a regular petunia. So these are good to plant. You can continue to plant your um, your lobelia, like your uh, Riviera blue eyes is a good one. Um, got the color packs of those. And um, then you got your alyssum. So your alyssum, this is great for the bees too. Uh, alyssum produces so much nectar and the bees love it. So, and one thing, one thing to remember with all the annuals are to make sure they get enough water. I, I always gauge my water and how frequent. I'll, I'll, I might start out on a Monday. I'll watch them. If they start wilting, I'll water them Wednesday. If they need more water on Friday, I'll hit them Friday. But I don't like to water so frequently. So that's one thing with those. And when I fertilize them, a trick that I do, let me, I'm going to be off uh, camera for a minute, but um, I just use on, on everything I feed, whether it's annuals, perennials, feed them with the down to earth rose food. A lot of people don't see flour and flour mix. So this is a good all purpose um, flour food because you could use it on everything. I buy big bags and I feed my whole yard with it. So this is a good one with it. Uh, powder form, you take about a handful and always work it around the plants. And water really good. This is the trick with the organics that help them break down and release their nutrients is when you're done mixing them around the plants, give them a good drink in water because that's how this helps helps it activate and break down. So a good one to use. And so um, let's go back. So annuals, we're a little early yet. We haven't got our Lysianthus and that's another one. And then, like I said, the different varieties of Gomfrina. So that's with the annuals. So all the summer annuals are coming in. One of my favorite sections that I love, perennials. Like now is the time to do your perennials. So we're getting in all the summer perennials. So. Pentus. Pentus is a good full sun perennial. They call it the star cluster flower. I like that one. Your dahlias, from your little border dahlias to your bigger dahlias. Um, I have some more. I have some more right here in one gallon. So the little 
And this one is called Mega Bloom, a little small variety. Um, good for um, good for blooming. Um, and you go into the other perennials, like, let's get some of them out. Like, you have the Garas. I love the Garas. I sort of squeezed them in here. So Garas are really good. They'll get into about a three by three plant. Um, some other summer plants that I like, your Angelonias are really good right now. Now this is sort of a short lived perennial. I sometimes treat it as an annual, but it likes a lot of heat. So that's another one that you could do right now. The little Nemesias, these are good. Love using those. And we're getting into a lot of the um, Gallardias and Blanket Flower, and these are great for the butterflies. So good, butterflies like that open, open flower where they can get that, that pollen off it. The little Swan River Daisies, these are good right now. Um, you go into what else do I have? Um, I have a lot of other, like the yarrows. Yarrows are more a good, really good perennial, like the pink yarrow, good butterfly plant. I got the true geranium, the English geranium called Roseanne. One of my favorite plants to put around roses. Um, you got more yarrow. Uh, this is a bigger type of yarrow called moonshine. I love this variety. You know, it'll get bigger, two to three feet tall, but great perennial for the garden. Likes a lot of heat. Um, you're getting other other perennials too that are coming in like the agastaches. These are a great hummingbird plant. Like anything that has a long fluted flower like these and the salvias. I think I put the salvias in the, the down on the ground, but these are great hummingbird plants because they, they have that long fluted flower and the nectar sits in the back of the flower so the hummingbirds can draw that nectar out of the flower. So. Another good one is the uh, pensamins are great right now to put in. Um, you have another bigger form of agastache, hummingbird mint they call this. One of my favorite plants, it's related to the mint family, really good one to use. And so that's pretty much it for the, the sun perennials. We do have a little bit of the shade, the shade plants and sh uh, shade color too, like like this, so this goes into the shade stuff like this is a really good perennial for shade the heliotrope heliotropic these will get about two to three feet tall they get a purple flower they, they have a very fragrant flower so almost like vanilla um then the other some of the other colors oh you go into the nigginian patients we treat them as more of a annual but they're sort of perennial annual border like those and the guineas stay short um and then the little non-stop begonias they're a short form of the tuberous begonia, and I love to do those in morning sun and afternoon shade in the summer. You have your, your heucheras, your corobels are great to do in. Uh, corobels come in a lot of different colors, good, good perennial for shade. I love the little mini fuchsias too. The little mini fuchsias are good, give you a lot of color. Um, the coleus I like for foliage color in the shade. Uh, you got to watch them for the caterpillars. If they get caterpillars really bad, I will use um, an organic spray called Spinosad. So that's one thing I, I do use a lot for caterpillars is the Spinosad. And I'll talk more about that when I get into some of the other flowers. So that's good. So I went through a lot of the shade, a lot of the sun perennials. Um, I'm going to talk a little bit about some of the, the um, California monarch plants, more like the, the milkweed, because nobody really talks about the milkweed that much, but so we got all of our milkweed in right now. This is a Slepsius fascularis. This is the plant the monarchs use for their larvae. So they lay their eggs on here and the, and the, the larvae eat it and use it as a food crop. So now's the time to start as we go into summer, start planting your milkweed. And a lot of questions I get when we get the yellow aphids on here, I don't spray anything because the monarch eggs might be on her or the larvae. So if I get those little gold aphids, I don't spray anything. I wipe them off with my finger and I'll wash them off with water. And that's the um, the, the uh, fascularis. We're getting in the other, this is the other milkweed. Um, this is Asepsius californica. Um, this one is a smaller bush, deeper taproot. This one grows more at the foothills of the Sierras. So very very drought tolerant plant but this is a really good one too to use and um yeah so got both of those in right now so definitely time to plant them they like the heat a uh, little moderate on the water you would put them in full sun i don't really feed them with that much if your soil is really heavy sometimes i'll use a little cactus mix 
or something that's going to help that soil drain. So always put them in full sun and don't keep them too wet. Keep them a little bit more on the dry side. So that's important for uh, the native the native milkweeds as we go into summer. They're going to love that heat. They're going to really take off. Um, if it gets really hot, sometimes I will mulch them with like a shredded cedar bark or a little chip, chipped redwood if, you, if you're in a really hot area. But again, uh, moderate with the water. You know, maybe once a week. If we get really hot, maybe twice, but not too wet. So that's with, with those. Um, let's go through, we're gonna go through the vegetables. We'll talk a little bit about some of the, the other perennials like the roses and the azaleas and the camellia. So we're going through that. So now is a time as we go into summer, I still plant a few tomatoes, but we're almost winding out of tomato season because we're getting later for them. So right now, I'm not doing any late varieties of tomatoes. So anything that's like 80, 80 days or over, I'm not. That's Those are the tomatoes I'm gonna do in mid, mid April to almost May. So now we're into June. I can still do the early ones like the cherry tomatoes. Like I pulled the, one of my favorite cherries, the Sun Gold Cherry. Now I could do this one right now because it will produce in like 65, 70 days. So the sun golds are really quick. So quick varieties. Um, another one I, I pulled somewhere and I don't know where I put it. Uh, the little Roma, there's a Roma tomato. Oh no, this is a really good Japanese tomato called Momotaro. And Momotaro is early 70 days. So I could still plant that one right now, Momotaro. And um, then the Roma tomatoes I can plant right now. and. The main thing with tomatoes, put them in a lot of sun, give them consistent water, fertilize them. So I, with all my tomatoes, I always will give them some of the down to earth all purpose. But one thing with me, I always will give them extra calcium because tomatoes like a lot of calcium. So give them extra calcium. This is oyster shell meal. This has 35% calcium. So I'm always using about a handful or two handfuls per plant. I'll give them about one handful of this worked around and again water really good but this is a good source of calcium and it helps that fruit develop then you don't get blossom end rot so that's a good one for the tomatoes and the same thing with peppers and eggplant feed them good feed them with calcium and so you can still do all your peppers like your shishitos and your your um your jalapenos and your anaheims and your hatch all your hot um, weather peppers they love the heat so now they're coming on they can be planted now. Um, eggplant too. Eggplant are heat lovers. I grabbed an Italian variety called Rosa Bianca. That's a good one. That's a big, that would be a good one for doing like eggplant Parmesan. There's another one in here that I like that's more of the Japanese eggplant called Millionaire. These are good for grilling. They're a little bit firmer and they're longer, skinnier. But again, they'll get about two feet tall. Feed them good with the all purpose down to earth. Feed them with the calcium and get them growing. And um, what else, beans. So I grabbed some bush beans. Um, so you can start doing your bush beans right now, your pole beans, your French filet beans. You could do seeds, you could do plants. So they're a summer, summer lover. Um, they like the heat. Um, now, one of the, oh yeah, the cucumbers. I almost forgot, forgot the cucumbers. <laughs> and so you have the Japanese cucumbers. These like to climb, so they get taller. So you wanna put them on a trellis or put them at the bottom of a trellis that's at least six feet tall so they can climb. Um, I like the little Persian cucumbers, like the Cusinos. The Cusinos are good. Um, and so they're good to plant right now and I have more of the Persian cucumbers, so put those. The Persian cucumbers don't really climb, so I just, put, I just plant them on the ground and let them sprawl around the ground. So they're not really climbers. They'll, they'll, they're, they'll just sprawl on the ground, so I keep those on the ground. Um, with um, strawberries, you can still plant strawberries. Now we're getting into harvesting. You want to keep on f getting them to flower and grow. So let me grab that other one. Where's the other one at? Let's see where the other one went. Um, you want to watch for runners. If they start producing runners, like see this long runner right here? So I don't want them to produce runners. So I'll take my little Felco pruners and I always trim them off really close to where the crown is. So I want them to flower more and then I'll take off this, this dead uh, flower. So they're gonna produce more uh, flowers and leaves out of this crown. So I don't want them because once they start producing runners, they're gonna try to produce new plants or new babies. I don't want them to do that. I want them to keep on flowering and fruiting through summer like these little color packs. Uh, this is one of my favorite varieties called Chandler. Chandler is a good one. Seascape's a good one. 
Um, these are more closer to what they call everbearing types. So definitely plant those. I do like to sometimes get color packs more because the color packs more. Hi, we're doing a we're doing a live stream. <laughs> uh, but yeah, so the Chandlers, but nice little starts. Even when I pull one out, got a good root system. <clears throat> what I do though too, even when they're this little, I turn it around. I cut the flowers off when they're really little because I just want them to grow. So see when I get this little color pack and this little start. So I always just perfect little plant. You don't want to bury the crown though. So that's one thing. If you can see the crown, I'll hold it up. You don't want to bury this crown. This crown always has to be above the soil when you plant. Because if you bury that crown, you're going to rot them out. So again, fertilizing them with the same thing. I'll just use the, the down to earth all purpose. Um, but now, now that we're really going closer to into summer, it's time for pumpkins. So now it's what you're, you're going to plant all your pumpkins right now. You could do seed, you could do plants. I brought up um, fairy tale. Fairy tale is, is a really solid flesh pumpkin that's going to be more of an eating pumpkin. And then I brought up um, just the Queensland Blue, another cooking. And then one of the ones that holds the world record in the largest pumpkin, it's called Dill's Atlantic Giant. They have these on record of some of the pumpkins reaching up to a thousand to two thousand pounds. So really large pumpkin. Um, and you can still do seeds. I brought some seeds up. So like the little um, fairy tale uh, pumpkins, the little miniatures can can you can plant direct them right now. Uh, the jack o' lantern pumpkins right now. So the main thing when we go into June, the reason why we're planting pumpkins right now is like some of the bigger pumpkins take about a hundred to one hundred twenty days. To grow and then they take another uh, 30 to 60 days to ripen out their fruit so that's why when you do them um, plant them now you know don't wait if your soil is a little cooler you can actually plant these and um, I save empty uh, color packs sometimes and I'll plant the seeds in here with good potting soil um, and then I got the seeds of another variety that gets about uh, 100 to 200 pounds it's called Big Max Big Max is another good really large pumpkin but so now is the time to do them and when you get into pumpkins and squash and any of these summer um, producing vegetables, you want to feed them really heavy. So what I do with them is I'll start out giving them a really good amount of the all-purpose, good good vegetable fertilizer. But what I do differently, let me let me take one out. I use compost tea a lot. So like the Malibu compost tea. I didn't have time to get water and show you guys, but it's it looks like a like a regular tea bag, and this is Malibu compost. So you steep it in the bucket. I'll put it on a string so it ha hangs halfway in the bucket and you keep squeezing it and then every two weeks water it in and you'll you'll get a lot of nutrients to them and that's really helps plants take off especially with the cucumbers and with the peppers but definitely with the squash and the pumpkins and all that stuff you're planting right now and another um group of plants that i sort of forgot to bring up <laughs> i forgot to bring up some of the, the zucchinis and the squash Keep planting your zucchinis, like your your uh, Coco Zelli, Italian heirloom, your Black Beauties, your all of them. Plant them right now. That's a bush. Z zucchinis are a bush, and then you have your patty pan, your scallop squash. They're good to plant right now. They're more of a bush. Now is the, my favorite time also to start planting spaghetti squash and um, your butternut squash. Now those two are trailers, so you got to give them more room. So they're going to trail like a pumpkin because that's what they're that's what they're related to. They're a cousin to the, the pumpkins. But so definitely your spaghetti squash now. I don't really have a lot of plants, but I do seeds. And if the soil is still cold where you're at, plant them in the containers. Let them grow for about a month in the container, and then put them out in the garden and put them in a lot of sun and get them growing. So that's with um, all of the vegetables. So all your summer stuff. And one last thing I'll show you that's interesting with these fairy tales. See how this has a variegated leaf? The variegated leaf actually, the variegated leaves tend to have more of a resistance against powdery mildew. So that's another thing with our June gloom that you have to watch with all the squash and the pumpkins and the cucumbers. If I start getting uh, powdery mildew, which looks like white talcum powder on the plant. Now, if I do start seeing that fungus show up, I, I take the organic spray. This is just Rose 3-in-1. So the Rose 3-in-1 works really good because this has sulfur in it so this is a good one for spraying for powder and mildew so i don't spray it in the day i wait until the evening when it's cooler and i spray the leaves with this 
the minute I see the mildew starting, which is, you know, the mildew starts when we have those cool damp mornings like today and then hot afternoons. So definitely use your sulfur or your rose three in one for that. Um, now going on to herbs. So now is the time to, you can keep on doing all your summer herbs. So all your, your basils are coming in right now. This is a variety called new far, new far basil. If you guys make tea, we're getting our, our Tulsi, our Tulsi basils coming in. You're getting the Italian basils, like the um, the Genovese basils are coming in. So they're good to plant right now. What I do with basil, I um, when they start getting leggy, I always pinch them. So pinch the tops, you know, I'll go through and then keep on, I take my, my two fingers and I just go to that new growth and pinch them. So that way when you see it, the new growth that's coming out of here is gonna start producing and then, what I do, because I use basil a lot when I make pizzas and I cook, I just literally will just hold it and just take it right off the, take it right off the, the stem. You know, I sort of pull it down the stem. And then sometimes what I do is I hold it, I hold it up and then I take the stem off it and then I use the leaves. And so I always will take that stem because that stem's more tougher. So when I'm putting them on pizzas, I might even take and shred them but I love using basil. Basil is my favorite. So on pizzas, on sp in spaghetti, love fresh basil. So keep on use, doing your basil. Another one of my favorites is your oregano. So I'm planting a lot of oregano right now, the Greek oregano, the Italian oregano. So I'll show you a trick when I harvest oregano. You pinch the, the whole stem off, right? And what I do is I hold the top and then I just sort of lightly pull all those leaves off. And then I use those leaves when on my pizzas and in my sauce. So now's the time to do your, um, all your oregano's are good. Um, I like using this African blue basil. I don't use it as much for cooking, but it's really more to bring in the pollinators to help pollinate my zucchini and pumpkins. The bees love the pollen that comes off this flower. So plant an African blue basil and it is a perennial. I've had mine in the ground for about four years now. So good to plant right now. Parsley, I do right now. I like the Italian flat leaf. French tarragon is, is good right now. Uh, salvias, this is the cooking sage. This is Nazareth, which is the skinny leaf. So if you guys are cooking and you're using um, sage for seasoning, get the narrow leaf. The narrow leaf's good. You got French um, and English thyme. Put that in right now. Um, we got another tomato, Roma tomato, <laughs> rosemary. So rosemary, the upright cooking rosemary planting. You're all your lavenders. So it's a good time to plant your lavenders. This is a little French lavender. Key thing with lavenders, put them in a lot of sun, trim them twice a year, trim them in, in late fall, like around October, give them a light shape. And then early February, light shape, and don't overwater them. Water them once or twice a week and don't feed them. They're not a, I don't feed my lavenders with anything. And what else do we have in here? So this is a really good commercial variety. Uh, Grosso. Grosso is an intermediate. This is the one they use a lot for the leaves and for cuttings for the oil. So that's good. Um, and then so even your mint. I grabbed mint somewhere, but I don't know what I did with it. Uh, but mint is good to plant right now and all that, that stuff. So keep planting your herbs. Um, now I want to go a little bit about roses. I don't know. I'm going to have to grab the rose because it's in front. Oh, this is one of my favorite roses. Um, so this is a pink rose. Let me see if I can hold it up. This is more of like, oh, I'm getting all caught up. This is a really good rose. Um, this is called Yves Piaget. They call this a peony rose or, cause it, it has that dimpling. Let me move some stuff so I can put it on the table. I got too much stuff on the table. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, but so this is a um, peony rose. And so you get, um, now is the time to, roses are gonna still be going strong. June is still a strong month for them. They might start slowing down a little bit next month. Um, when you get a little browning on the on the edges of the flower, that's pretty normal with the way our weather's going right now because when it's cooler at night in the morning, the buds don't open as quickly and the water gets in there and causes that browning. So sometimes if they're really bad, I just cut them off. But now's the time I do want to start watching. Let's pull off a leaf and I'll show you. I don't see any on this leaf, but sometimes I watch for rust and rust is going to get bad on them and and mildew will probably get bad closer into this month because again 
cool damp mornings, hot afternoons, gets rust and the mildew. And what I do is I strip off a lot of these inner leaves and then I spray and I, I use the same spray that I've used for it. All of the fungicides, let me see if I can find it. Again, I'm just using the Rose 3 in 1. A lot of times I'll spray the, the top really good. This looks pretty good. I don't see any mildew on this one. And a lot of times I know people ask me, do you really go down to, why do you go down to five leaves when you trim the flower? See, if I pruned it way up here, it's going to produce a really skinny, um, a, the new growth is going to be skinny and sometimes it's going to weep. So when I'm pruning it down farther where there is five leaves, like see five leaves right here, it's going to come out as a stronger cane. So that's the main reason why is if you cut it way up here, it's going to come out with a weak cane and the weak cane, the flower might, might wilt. So if you're going, I always tell people you go one, two, three sets of leaves back and you'll hit five leaves. Um, that way, when that new growth comes out, then it's going to be stronger. So that's another little trick with roses. Um, you're going to start seeing a little um, fly larvae on them this month too called bristly rose slugs. So if you see a lot of holes in your leaves, it's called, it's caused by a, a soft, the soft fly larvae. And what I do, let me see where I put it. Again, I use spinosad for that, which is good for caterpillars. So I'll use this on hornworms in, in the summer. I'll use it for sawfly larvae, anything where the caterpillars are really chewing on the plants, even basil. Sometimes when we go into July, the basil will start getting chewed on. Fully organic, good to use. I don't use it too frequently, but I, I really don't use it until I see any problems too. I don't spray my garden that much. I only spray when I see the problem. So that's another thing with that. And another thing too on um, roses, if you get a lot of new growth, you're gonna get aphids. I like the organic um, soaps. One of my favorite companies, I love Safer. Safer is one of the better organic companies out, uh, but this is a good organic soap. So if the aphids are attacking the new growth, I'll spray the new growth really good, and then I'll wait a half an hour and I'll wash it off. So that's a good one to use for that. So. And uh, fertilizing them too. Um, I brought up the rose fertilizer. So good Epsom salt fertilizer. I, I always will feed roses in the growing season every, every two months. But when I trim them back, I always feed them. So roses are gonna go strong through June. They'll slow down a little bit in July. So that's with roses. And there's a lot of roses. Now I want to tell you guys too, now's the time to come and get them because as we go more into June, we might we might start running out of certain varieties. So if you want any roses from your David Austins, your Grandiflora's, your Floribundas, your Hybrid Teas, and your Climbers, buy them now because next month we might not have as many to choose from. So that's important. Um, and another thing that I should talk about when it gets hotter, I'm always trying to water them about once a week, twice a week. I like to use some of the mulches when it gets hot. So this is a shredded redwood. So you put down a good layer of mulch and then you don't, it will help retain the water from evaporation. So mulching can really help. And if we, if we go into this year and have a water restriction, then back the water off and try to water deeper and not so, some people water too, too fast and too often. So they'll water like three, four minutes. Sometimes I'll water for five to seven or eight and give them a good drink, but I always will mulch them and keep the mulch away from the trunk a little bit. Don't get it close because you can rot the trunk out. So you have shredded cedar, shredded redwood, the mini mulch, the mini chip. Good to mulch right now on a lot of your perennials and a lot of your garden to help retain water so you're not um, getting, you're cutting that evaporation. So that's important with them. So that's with roses. So another thing, um, citrus. Citrus is good to plant right now. Um, citrus are heavy feeders. This is a little Mexican lime. Let me come back over here because I don't want to be too close to the camera. Um, but this is a little Mexican lime. This is the really tart little bartender lime. So this is a good one. Um, planting them right now because they like it hotter and feeding them really good. Again, these, these plants are heavy feeders. I'll feed them about every six to eight weeks and watering maybe once or twice a week. I don't like to keep these as wet. But nice little semi-dwarf. Um, we've had a little harder time getting some of the citrus in with just the overall, the supply and demand. So right now, the demand has been so heavy, even last year, the supply, it's getting better right now. So we're starting to get Mineola tangellos. We got some Valencia oranges. Um, 
got the Mexican limes. And so stuff's starting to get better. So if you're looking for certain citrus, just call us and, and ask us and see which varieties that we have in stock. So feed them good, water them good, but let them dry out a little bit between waterings. Don't keep them too wet. If they start getting like even white fly and some of the other ones, then I'm using like the organic soaps. There's another spray that I like. If you guys get white fly on anything, it's an oil spray called Takedown. I know a lot of people like to use neem. I go more for the lighter oils that don't have such a residual effect. So I do like going through more. I'll use the I'll use the takedown because it's clarified canola oil. So that's another one of my favorites. So citrus, definitely planting right now and don't overwater them. Um, azaleas, azaleas and camellias. I didn't bring any camellias up, but let's let's talk about azaleas. So now is the time. Trim them back. If you haven't fertilized them, feed them. Most varieties are going to bloom again in fall, so now is a good time to just give them a light trim, feed them a little bit with an acid fertilizer, and um, make sure they're getting adequate water, and then just be ready for the next bloom, which can be um, more in the fall, like September, October. With camellias, now is the time, really, camellias have two growth seasons. They have a flower season and they have a growth season. Now they're in their growth season, and their flower season usually starts in, in late summer, early fall. So really we're getting into that point where feed them now. I sometimes will feed them one last time in July, but not much, you know, but again, do the down to earth acid fertilizer, but um, don't feed them into late summer, fall. So that's important with them. And yes, yes. Um, one question, how thick should you mulch? I've heard one to three inches. You know, I like, I will tell you, she's asking how, how deep should I put my mulch? Yeah. I, let me grab a handful of it. I, I don't like to go that deep. I like to go about an inch. Okay. Cause I found if you go three inches or two, three inches, and I've seen that sometimes it's hard for the water to make it through the mulch cause the mulch is really dry. So when you put it down, water the mulch really heavy to get the mulch the water through it but i always go about an inch okay. inches is adequate but three inches it's a little bit deep so i go about an inch okay so what's the difference between compost and mulching um see well she's asking what's the difference between composting and mulching so composting or compost in general is broken down more so that's yeah. broken down or, or organic matter so that might have been a mix of wood chips or grass clippings or alfalfa hay it's broken down more sometimes i do mulch with compost if the soil is really bad so and another trick that i do is i didn't bring anything up but sometimes i'll take like the malibu compost or my homemade compost i'll put it down first around my vegetables and my roses and then i'll put mulch over it so but definitely mulch with your compost to improve your soil but um basically mulch is unbroken down organic matter so it could be straw it could be wood chips could be alfalfa hay it's just not broken down yet yeah 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 okay any other questions no okay okay um finishing up a little bit um and again um another thing that i didn't touch on as much is the cactus and the succulents all your drought tolerant plants now is the time to plant them so as we go more into june start doing all your drought tolerant plants, even your desert trees, like your acacias and your Mexican Palo Verdes and all those, and even some of the um, the desert plants we're starting to see come in, like the kangaroo paws and the bush mooring glories and all the proteas, plant them in right now. They love it when it's warmer. So that's one thing to take advantage of. If we go through a little June gloom and then we start getting hotter afternoons, start planting those warm, weather drought tolerance and even with um i didn't really go into ground covers that much but even if we get a lot of water restrictions and the one thing with with water the lawns will take a lot of water and i know a lot of people are hesitant about taking out their lawns but look at some of your ground covers that are lawn alternatives one of my favorites is called diamondia i love diamondia it's one of my favorite ground covers used as a lawn alternative you can even go more native. You can do a lot of your cianothis. You can do your manzanitas. You can do even some of the yarrow. Like there's a yarrow called millifolium that actually some people use as a replacement for a small lawn. It would be harder to do big lawn, but that's something to think about. And um, water in the morning when the evaporation isn't as high, six, seven in the morning. And um, always try to retain water and don't water so frequently. 
That's a big thing because I lived in the desert for a while in Las Vegas, Nevada, Henderson, Nevada, and we were under heavy water restrictions. So we watered early, but always look at the frequency you're watering and how long. And if, if you have a problem with your sprinklers and they're older sprinklers and they're putting out three to five gallons per minute, look through, there's a really good one that's called MP Rotators um, by I think Hunter. Oh, those are good because those will put out like a half a gallon to a gallon per minute. So very efficient. So that's one thing, be more efficient with your water. If you have a lot of overspray, go with drip irrigation. Look at that. So there's a lot. If you guys have any questions about it, um, come in and talk to me. You know, and, and I'll tell you everything because I've installed irrigation and water auditing, and I've done a lot of things over my uh, horticultural career. So definitely come in and talk to me about it if you guys have questions. Okay, thank you guys. David Rizzo at Rogers Garden signing off, and I will see you guys. Have a nice day.